Welcome back. On today's show, what company is claiming fastest car ever status? What Porsche set a new lap record at Road Atlanta? And what new Bugatti fits in your living room? I'm Dana Simone, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. Buckle up. When most people think about what makes a car fast, they think numbers, zero to 60, the quarter mile, and top speed. And the names that come to mind are standard hypercar fare, like Bugatti, Koenigsegg, Lamborghini, McLaren, Pagani, and Hennessy? When Texas-based Hennessy isn't building ultra-modified performance versions of existing trucks, SUVs, and sports cars, it's apparently developing its own line of supercars. The just-announced Venom F5 is the successor to 2014's Venom GT, which was a Lotus-based car with a gigantic engine. The GT was clocked at 270.4 miles per hour. Hennessy claims that the F5 has a top speed of 311. If that number holds in real life, the F5 will be faster than the Bugatti Chiron Supersport. The Bugatti is the current top speed king with a recorded 304.7 miles per hour. Because if you can't prove it, it doesn't count. <coughs> SSC Tuatara. <coughs> In numbers you can maybe believe, the rear wheel drive Venom F5 has a 6.6 .6 liter twin turbo V8. Its output is 1,817 horsepower and 1,193 pound-feet of torque, and its curb weight is only 3,053 pounds. Of course, ultra-lightweight materials are involved. For example, the F5's carbon fiber tub is only 190 pounds. Hennessy will build only 24 at a starting price of mm, $2.1 million. Apparently, and we have to keep using that word because it's Hennessy, half of the cars have already been ordered. Porsche may not lay claim to any top speed records, but it doesn't have to. Lap times are more its thing. And an unlikely Porsche set a new track record at Road Atlanta. The Porsche badge stands for performance no matter what model it's on. As further proof, Lee Keen piloted a Taycan Turbo S around the two and a half mile track in just under one minute and 34 seconds. This makes the Taycan the fastest electric vehicle to lap the road racing circuit, which features 12 corners, a long straight, and a lot of elevation changes. The vehicle used was a production model outfitted with standard summer performance tires. The only modification made was an adjustment to tire pressures. And tire squeal was probably the only thing you heard as the silent Taycan sped around road Atlanta. I mean, what a wild scene for the senses, right? But speaking of expensive noises, Bugatti has partnered with Tidal Audio. Huh? Nope. Apparently, Tidal Audio... Tidal Audio is a German audio company not connected to Jay-Z's music streaming service. Turn off the show? No, it's not Jay-Z. Okay. Yes, it's confusing. But the German title is working with Bugatti to develop a hyper-performance product for your ears. And the first model in the lineup is called the Royale. Produced in pairs, the luxury loudspeakers are excessively designed to look sleek, but also kind of basic. Available in two themes, Dual Tone offers contrasting colors while monocoque features piano finishes. Like the cars, the audio system can be as bespoke as you wish. Customization includes various materials like fabrics, leather, carbon fiber, polished steel, and precious metals. The Royale is about 57 inches tall, which is like, I don't know, here? And it weighs 352 pounds. Each speaker features four subwoofer drivers and a three-way front unit, with a mid-range driver and tweeter with diamond diaphragms. By the way, that's the same tweeter used in the cars. Two special editions are available as well, the Edition Blanc and the Edition Noir. Only 15 sets of each will be produced. The price? They didn't tell us, but the person who buys a Bugatti speaker buys it because it's expansive. It's time for You Paid What? Where we bring you the most interesting auction results of the past week. First up is a 1988 Pontiac Fiero GT that sold for $90,000. You paid. 
What? Oh, come on. I had a crush on this guy who owned one just like that. Uh, memories. Yeah, and he, I didn't like it. He was so nice. Anyways, yes, $90,000. So, of course, there's a story. It's pristine. It's still wrapped in factory plastic. And not only is it the last Fiero ever built, but it is the last Pontiac to be built in Pontiac, Michigan. Its build is fully documented, and it has had one owner, a factory employee who won the vehicle in a company raffle. Naturally, its sale broke the auction record for all Fieros ever by about $30,000. What's more surprising? Someone paid 90 grand for a Fiero or that someone is keeping records for Fiero auctions? Something less than showroom shiny is this 2001 Lexus Land Cruiser. The modified LX470, aka 100 series Land Cruiser, has been turned into an even more capable go anywhere machine. Mods include a 2.5-inch lift, off-road spec, front and rear bumpers, rock sliders, a winch, a height-adjustable suspension, the list really goes on. And it sold for $24,000. You paid... what? Mm-hmm. All that capability, only standard wear and tear from actual trail use, and with just 21,000 miles. I support that. I also support this because how cute is this Honda K truck? This 1995 Honda Actifier truck was imported from Osaka, Japan to the U.S. this summer. The JDM Mini truck has just over 9,000 miles on the odometer and features a working PA system, lights, and sirens. While it's not equipped to connect to fire hydrants, the retractable tray in the bed is large enough to hold a water tank and compressor. And a lucky bidder snagged it for $8,550. You paid. What? K-Cars stateside are a rare sight. They're pint-sized perfect for Japan's tiny streets, but they'd get swallowed up on our wide avenues with even bigger cars. Some states won't even allow you to register them. But even if I couldn't drive this little Honda around, I'd still adore having it in my driveway. That's all for today. I'll be back tomorrow with more of the top news stories. Until then, stay safe and never stop driving.